Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In today's episode, we're going to handle key presses and talk about the event loop in SDL. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So if you watched any of the previous videos, you saw that we learned how to initialize SDL, create a window and do a little delay just so we can see that window or do a quit. In the preceding video to this one, we also talked about the callback API. It doesn't really matter which one we're using, but for this particular video, we want to look at something new and talk about the event loop here. So I'm going to go ahead on the wiki page here and go down to the complete API index and we're going to go down to SDL event. Okay, so let's go ahead and find this. This is a struct that we're going to add to our application. This is a structure for all events in SDL. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just create one here. So let's do SDL event here. I'll just call event as is commonly done. And now I can get rid of this uh, delay here because what I effectively want to do here is create an infinite loop here. This is for my application to run indefinitely. Okay, or forever, right? Graphics applications run until we press quit here, which is what we're going to want to handle or otherwise do some command here. Uh, but SDL otherwise handles all sorts of events. So things that happen with our window, maybe it changed our display. If we press some keyboard event, which we're going to talk about today, if we moved our mouse, clicked our mouse, dragged our mouse, you know, did something with a joystick, etc., etc. You can see all the different types of events that can happen and we want to be able to handle them. Okay. So uh, what exactly does this mean? Well, again, we have this important structure here, STL event. And if you scroll down a little bit here, we'll see that basically what we want to do here is read events from the event queue. Okay. So again, we've created our test event. And then basically we call this function here, SDL poll event, which removes an event from a queue. Okay. So again, I'll just illustrate this. So internally in SDL, we have this guy here, some queue, uh, I'm not sure the exact size, but let's say it's large enough. In theory, it could resize itself. Maybe it's an array that looks like this. Maybe it's more of a uh, circular or ring buffer type of thing. However you want to illustrate it. But the point is it is a, uh, typically a FIFO structure. Okay. So first in first out, uh, Q. Okay. So let's just say we have some event here and I'm just going to say it's the keyboard press. Maybe I press the word key capital K or the letter R. These are different keyboard events, or maybe I move my mouse cursor somewhere, which I'll just draw a little mouse cursor there. Maybe I hit the, uh, up key, maybe I do something with the joystick, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So it fills in this event queue here. Okay, so these are my events. And if we look at the source, if you dig into the source, you'll find that basically when I call poll event, that's going to pick out these events and handle them. If we have a way, if we've coded a way to handle what happens when I press capital K or R or move my mouse, etc. These sorts of events that internally happen in this SDL event structure, right? Which we just created here with SDL event. Okay. So that's the basic idea of how this event queue works. And you'll sometimes notice that you can put the uh, SDL poll event in a loop here. And basically, right, if I pass in the address of this event here, uh, it's basically saying, hey, uh, populate. So it's returning whatever the polled event is into this structure. Okay. So whatever my object is, uh, and let's label it as they have here, test uh, event, right? Uh, for the first iteration, right? I'm going to grab this letter K here and, you know, it's it's saying, hey, we have some keyboard press with the letter K. And then the next time I call poll event, it's going to uh, process in, again, test uh, event. Okay, I'm just drawing my struct metaphorically here. And it's going to have uh, R in it. Okay. So it'll handle that case over here. Okay. So that's the idea here. We're basically repopulating every time we call pull event in this test event structure. And that's what we're going to test against. Okay. So then we can have some switch statement here, uh, switch statement or if statement doesn't really matter how you want to structure it. This is what's the type that we got. What's the type of event. Okay. Uh, what are our type of events? Well, you know, something like this here. Now you'll notice uh, I use the word struct, but this is actually a union, which basically means that uh, the type here uh, that is going to be returned or the value for one of these 
you know, we'll get back some integer here and it'll correspond to one of these guys here. Okay, that tells us, hey, this was a common event, display event, window event, etc. And then based off of that, I can treat the uh, event appropriately based off the union, meaning how this sort of, uh, again, a union, if you're not familiar with those, I've got a few videos um, if you search my name in union. Um, but it basically means, hey, if this is a type of keyboard event, then we want to look at the keyboard event thing. So let's actually look at that as an example here. So keyboard event, and we'll do this again just as we code it here. Uh, if you just search keyboard event here, you'll see that corresponds to uh, this key thing here. And these are the type of events that are keyboard events. The key was either pressed down or it's been released, right? It's up. So if I treat my event uh, as a uh, key here, meaning that it's a SDL keyboard event, then I can go into this structure and then figure out what key was pressed here, right? And, and particularly, I want this key code here, okay? So that's the idea here. Let's, let's go ahead and code it. That gives you a little bit of a uh, idea of how to navigate this uh, structure here. Uh, but again, I need this, uh, let's go back here to event and that important SDL poll event, okay? Uh, let's actually try this. Let's put it in a while loop here. Let's say uh, while uh, SDL poll event. Uh, and we want to repopulate our event here with anything that's happened here. Okay, now we want to handle some events here. Now, the typical one that you're going to find in the documentation is this event type SDL event quit. Okay, uh, let's actually look at where that is here. SDL event quit. Okay, so it's going to give us a quit event here. Uh, let's just see here. Uh, so anything that could return quitting, um, which is basically just going to be like clicking the X in the corner of the window here. Okay, let's let's see if that works here. Uh, and then we will, I don't know, break. Well, that's not going to do us any good. That'll break out of this polling loop here. But how do we break out of this while loop here? So usually we need some state here. Bool. Uh, running equals true. So let's just say running. And what we'll do here instead is say running equals false. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to compile this program that is now handling an event. And then we'll try to do some more interesting stuff here. Okay. Here's our compilation. We compiled successfully. Let's try to run with prog here. Okay. I've got my window running. What's a quit event? The top right. Brilliant, it works here. I handled the quit event here and was able to terminate here, okay? That works just fine here. So this can be a little bit tricky, this sort of loop within a loop uh, type of deal here. Uh, if I were to make this an if statement, then I could do something like just break, uh, and that would break out of the inner loop here. But uh, you know, typically we can have multiple events that have sort of piled up. And I think again, SDL will spend about a millisecond or something handling these. So if I'm moving my mouse around a bunch, um, you know, you'll eventually get to the other stuff that you want to do here. And this is your actual application slash game logic in this loop. And this is your uh, event handling loop. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense there on the structure. Let's go ahead and just compile it again. Uh, and it seems to be working just fine here. Okay. All right, let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's handle another event type here. So let's say else if, and we're gonna, we're gonna say event type. What do we wanna handle? Well, let's handle that uh, keyboard press here. Okay, so uh, let's just search keyboard. Let's say I have no idea what's going on here. SDL keyboard event. Okay, that's one of the things that I want uh, to handle. And if I scroll over, uh, I might have to make this larger here. Uh, keyboard event data. Okay, that's different than keyboard device event. That sounds like an actual like physical thing. Like I plugged in a new keyboard. So that's that's usually a hint of what I actually want to do here. So let's just copy that and do a control F here. And then we'll see here's the types here, right in this nice table relationship between event types and union members. Okay, the event type. That's what I want to check against event dot type this keyboard key down. Okay, so again, one thing at a time. Let's go ahead and paste that in here. And let's just, you know, let's just do a little sanity check here. I'll use SDL log. You can use standard print or C out, or if you're following along in a different language, right line, or, you know, whatever function you want here. A key was pressed. Uh, I'm just doing this so I don't have to change all my includes. Uh, okay, so it compiled. If I run, now let's press uh, the H key. 
Hopefully you could hear I'm pressing keys. Uh, a key was pressed. Great. Which key was pressed? Okay, let's go ahead and explore a little bit further. Uh, okay, so I know it's a keyboard event. I know that's the relationship between the thing that happened. Uh, you know, there might have been a bunch of events that happened, but you know, as soon as I get in this if block, I know the type was key down. So I know my event union is a keyboard event thing here. So let's go into STL keyboard event. And now I can look at uh, the key here. Now this is gonna be the confusing thing and you might just play around with this, but the SDL event field that I have is again, key. So event.key, right? I'm not looking at the type here, uh, event.key here. And then in the SDL keyboard event, that's where I wanna actually look at this key here. Okay, so let's say uh, which key was pressed. Uh, the key code I believe is just a integer. Um, so it'll be event.key.key, okay? Let's go ahead and compile that. Let's run it. And now I can press A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, uh, capital L. Uh, oops, wait, something else weird happened because I pressed shift. Okay, so you might have to think about how to handle multiple keys, but again, we'll maybe talk about that later uh, if people are interested. Uh, but that's the idea of how to handle keys. Okay, so hopefully that uh, makes sense as I'm hitting, uh, oh, let me open up my application again make sure I'm doing it within the window. The window needs to be in focus to handle events, right? So let me try that again. H, 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 U, et cetera. Okay, just so you can check your key codes. Now, what's the difference here between key and scan code? Uh, well, I can look at the comments here. SDL physical key code versus SDL virtual key code. Okay, so I want the thing that corresponds usually to like, uh, just whatever H is. And some of you I know have custom keyboards, maybe a Ranger keyboard, maybe you have a Dvorak layout or something, that's gonna be different, right? Maybe you uh, have different alphabets on your keyboard or have customized it. So, you know, typically I want the virtual key um, so that in my game, if the letter W is of importance uh, for something, that's that's the virtual key, wherever it is on your actual keyboard. Uh, but you can see another sort of state that you can query out of here, like, uh, you know, if you have a keyboard event and you want to check if the key was uh, down, you have that. If it's being held, uh, etc. Again, you have that stuff. If you have multiple windows, which uh, window is in focus when this key was pressed, and so on. So there's all sorts of interesting stuff in here. So go ahead and try that out. Uh, let's just go ahead and show you all the code in one screen so you can follow along or if you need to pause and take a look here. But this is the idea. So we learned about the event loop here. That is this guy here, this inner loop here for handling events. Uh, our actual application or game logic will come here as we proceed forward. And you need to hold the event somewhere, okay? Which is constantly being uh, pulled for if there are any. Uh, until this is null, that's when it'll stop, meaning there's no events to happen or there's been a timeout, right? We don't wanna wait forever. So every millisecond or something we will dedicate to uh, handling some events. Uh, and that's the basic idea here. So anyways, hope you enjoyed that video, folks. Hopefully uh, that made sense. Again, I'll point you to course.m.io. I've got all these videos here in the series playlist, or you can just watch them on YouTube if you're enjoying them that way as well. Alrighty, folks, thanks again for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.